Phil Crawford here, and I want to get the second warp on there, so I'm using the, the reed as a spreader here. So I want to get my threads threaded here, straight out the same width as I want the, the fabric, and it's going to be 24 inches. So I've worked it out. This is a 16 dent reed, and I have uh, 82 cotton. And I've got to thread the past pairs that you make when you're doing your measuring on your working mill. So put a past pair every fourth dent. Okay, I have. Uh, Obviously, my warps and my leaf sticks here on the back of my uh, reed. I've got to transfer that over here and have the, the leaf on this side. So I've got another set of leaf sticks. So now what I've got to do, I've got the end making a loop. I've got to pass through the first stick. Then I make one turn to the left and I pass it through the second stick. So that's my lease transferred onto my uh, second set of lease sticks. Continue on with this and uh, show you a little bit of video later on. Okay, progressing right along here, um, you notice these two stands are actually for a rattle that was made out of wood and I found that it uh, wasn't sufficient for finer threads, all right for uh, some of the heavier knitting yarns that I use for making blankets once in a while, but for the finer threads I found this reed to be ideal. It's actually uh, a style of spreading that the, the Swedish have done uh, for quite some time. In uh, one of the Swedish books that I own there, the big book of weaving, it actually shows this process. And it's uh, not too bad, and it gives you good results for uh, spreading your warp. And you don't have to buy anything extra. You've got a reed already to weave with, so you may as well use it. And it's it seems like it's kind of tedious, but it really, once you get going, you have your, your warp kind of spread out on your table, which is nice to be able to work at a table, by the way. And uh, I'll have to bend over. And see how this reed is actually a little bit elevated, so I can reach under. With and hold the uh, past pairs was just just a loop that's made on the end of your warping mill, whereas it goes over the turn dowel, so you get a loop that's a past pair. So, I'm, as I said before, I'm threading this every fourth dent to get my warp spread to 24 inches. I think there's 194 ends here. So, I just count out here for four dents. And just feed that through. I found that it's easy to just thread it by hand without a without a hook with these fine threads because you're not uh, squeezing through, so to speak, as you would with a heavier knit and iron. Let's see, it's just a matter of uh, following your leash on these back sticks and feeding through. And uh, one, two, three, four. Fourth dent, pass over the first stick, twist, pass over the second stick. And there's your cross being transferred. I have these sticks just on a chair there by the video camera just to hold that end up because my tape is not any more than five feet wide, I guess. And my sticks would go down on the other side, so I put the chair there just to support the end. I say it's real nice to be able to sit down and do some of this stuff and not be leaning over something. This doesn't have to be perfect either. I mean, if one's off by a dent, it's no big deal because you're not actually weaving. Once this is on, you're actually just using it to spread, so nothing to get too excited over. If you skipped one or added one. So we'll progress along and uh, show another step later. It took about. Uh, 50 minutes to spread this out, and uh, now I've got to take the second set of these sticks out because I'm not using them uh, uh, after this stage, so I'll just uh, tie one in. Now I want to gather this warp up and get it on my meter. Now my back beam has a stick like this that goes in a groove, 
to hold the warp on there as you're winding. So I'm taking this stick as well and putting it in behind the leaf stick. I've got the, my harness right here. I'm setting the stick everything on it and then um, I uh, and basically put this warp through the beater followed by the uh, reed here and make sure I got the pod in there now I'm going to lower the beater bar Okay, I'm going to try to put the warp back on the uh, supplementary beam here. I've got a stick here that was in the groove on the beam to do the winding, and I also have leaf sticks here, and I have to get this around here in one package. Two shafts, and then uh, 
the lemon is going to be on shafts three and four. Like that. So this is going to be an interesting experiment. It's, it's an experiment on a differential shrinkage. I'm trying to simulate quilting in cloth, but just have the shrinkage and the wadding uh, do the magic work. If it works out, it may not, but uh, we're giving it a try. Okay, we got it all wound on here, and I'm just cutting the ends off here, and the work will just pull through. So, off through the head. So, I basically like to uh, tie some ends together here, it doesn't matter in particular just how many, but it's just kind of a safety a safety uh, net more or less. It doesn't really matter exactly how many is in each, just to, just to keep things in order here. Eliminate the chaos. You can see there's some bare spots on the beam because it's uh, it's probably only a yard or two or a yard and a half on that beam because it's such a short work. So we didn't have to wind or wind too much. Now we'll put the loose off. Okay, now we've got the warp on both beams. You can see down here the second beam has, uh, or I should say the sectional beam has the cotton and the linen, both roughly 22 equivalent, and the 82 on the upper beam and the leaf sticks for the upper beam while I thread. Those leaf sticks will come back down to this beam here when I'm ready to weave and attach on there. So as you can see my bench is even in here. That makes it real convenient and I could see both warps. The other warps dangling down there and actually there is tape on the end of it to uh, keep the threads in order because I need uh, cotton and followed by two linen warps as I'm threading. So that's how that is going to go about. And I've got extra tape here and scissors and so on in case I need those. And the draft is up here. I don't know if from a distance you can see that that looks like uh, kind of diamonds. Well that's what I'm looking for. And it looks like the rest of it is a mess of threads, but there's actually three layers. The white is the middle layer that uh, comes to the surface to make the pattern. And then uh, there is a stitcher from the third layer that comes up of uh, linen to grab hold of uh, the middle layer again to uh, secure the cloth together so it won't be like a inflatable balloon in the middle. It'll be uh, stitched together in all the layers. So hopefully that'll work out. We'll see.